Welcome to the Land House channel. I'm Seth. This is an e-bike from Hovsco called the Hub Alpha. Now I am a complete beginner at riding an e-bike, so this will be my user experience for a complete noob. Let's go ahead and open up this box, assemble this bike, and start riding. First thing to note, this bike weighs close to 70 pounds, so as you're moving the box around, be careful, it is heavy. All right, got those straps off of there. Yeah. <laughs> box has staples on the top just break those loose and it should open right up to give you a look at the packaging I'm gonna pop the front of the box off here so you can see what this looks like how cool is that everything is wrapped up nicely now the back side of the box did have a puncture through it but I don't think it's causing anything to be uh, damaged at all so very cool all right, well, let's go ahead and pull some of this foam off of here and get this ready to ride. My first thoughts on unboxing this, a lot of care was put into keeping this bike from being damaged during transit. So uh, tons of foam and definitely nice because whenever you pay this much money for a bicycle, you don't want to have it damaged in uh, shipping. So, all right, now this box right here should have the tools we need to get everything up and running. The uh, first step on the instruction manual is to install the kickstand. Kick stand. And that's because you want to be able to prop this bike up as you are putting the rest of it together. So let's go ahead and get that installed first. The tools required to get this assembled are included here in this little pouch. So you've got uh, various wrenches, Allen wrenches. Luckily, the side of the box that I opened is the side that has the kickstand. So the kickstand already has the screws pre-threaded into it. I'm going to remove those. I'm going to place the kickstand behind the frame line that up with the threads back there and now I can re-thread that bolt through use that included allen wrench to get that tightened down the next step is to put the handlebars on I'm going to use my allen wrench to loosen these screws here and that will remove this mounting brace so I can put the handlebar in there I'm just going to make sure that I center this so that it uh, is facing directly forward. Now there are guidelines up under here so you know exactly where you're positioning your handlebars. The LED light can be pushed up and that helps to give you some room to work with here to tighten these down. Now there is a crosshairs in the middle which lets you make sure that your handlebars are centered left and right. There are also some uh, indicators on the side, so you can adjust this up or down depending on the angle that you like. We'll just try it right here for now, and I can swap it up later if need be. Now it's time to get the front wheel installed. The instructions say that this metal bar is just a protector for shipping, and so I'm supposed to remove that. It seems like a nice piece of hardware uh, since I hoard this kind of thing. I'll probably keep that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and loosen up these bolts here and then get this removed. Nope. I'll have to lift it up just a little bit. There we go. All right. Move those over to the side. Now this bar right here is the quick release for the wheel and that's what's going to be holding this together. So let's go ahead and move the wheel over and put it in between the frame. The wheel has this protective disc on there and that just needs to be removed. Let's see, the other one just popped loose. <clears throat> there we go. All right, got that out of there. Now, before I put this on, there is a small tab on the uh, brakes that has to be removed. Just going to pull that out activate those brakes. Let's turn this up into position here and get this 
threaded rod through. Now it does say that the quick release nut needs to be on the same size as the uh, brake. So let's keep that in mind. So just slipping this through here. Put the spring right there. All right, now I'm gonna pick up the bike and place this wheel in here. All right, so in order to get the nut into the little slot right here, it has to be almost totally off the threads and then it will slide down and allow you to click that into place. You do have to make sure the brake goes into the uh, shoe right here whenever you put that wheel in, of course. All right, I've got that cinched up there. Now you can see the brake cable is kind of touching the tire. There is a place right here that I'll be able to uh, lock that down out of the way like that. So it'll keep that from touching. Now it's pedal time. Now their pedals are different. So this one right here goes on the right side. This one goes on the left side. And the difference is the direction of the thread. So for this one, it's going to go clockwise once it gets started in here. The other one will go counterclockwise so that whenever you are pedaling, they are more likely to tighten themselves instead of loosen if you were to uh, ever get these loose enough. Let me get that started on there and then use the included wrench to get that tightened down. There we go. All right, let me put the other one on over here. This one installs in the same manner, except it is backwards from what you would think. So instead of lefty, loosey, righty, tidy, it's the opposite. This bike does come with a derail guard. I'm not gonna install that right now. Uh, they recommend that you have a professional put that on, and obviously I am not that. Now the user manual doesn't discuss the fenders at all, but let's see if we can't get this installed. So the bigger one, which is almost 180 degrees, is going to go into this side right here and fit all the way down like this. And the metal bars are going to attach right here and there's also a place for a screw down here and one up here as well. Now I realize that this little tool I was confused about earlier is actually a screwdriver. So you just plop that into position and that's possibly gonna work, but it may be just worth using your own instead of using that. But anyhow, uh, if you need that, you can for installing these fenders. Just finished getting both of the fenders installed. I think that's gonna help out a lot from keeping any road debris from flying up. Very nice. Now this side right here was a little bit bent, but uh, screwdriver seemed to get it all fixed up. All right, well, the next step is to move on to the seat here. And you can uh, just pull this little blower side here and that will open up the protective cover. There we go, very nice. So the seat is fully adjustable. You can just open up this little handle here. And as you can see, you can adjust to your needs like that. I'm seeing a reflector back here. It's actually a light, which is nice. And then you've got your light up here as well. So let me take this for a little spin and we'll see if I can't uh, give you a good review once I get going. And uh, it's been a while since I've ridden a bicycle, so let's see how well this does. There are front and back disc brakes. This also has a front suspension, as you can see right here. Now that can be locked if you don't want that to uh, happen. So uh, the four inch tires though will definitely give you a little extra bounce in there.
When I pulled this bike out of the box, I did not charge up the battery and it made it right at 30 miles with uh, step four or five. And I made it to this hill right here whenever the uh, bike battery uh, went out on me. So uh, what happens is you just all of a sudden uh, don't have the power that you had and essentially the bike just stops. So I'm gonna keep the screen off there and see if I can't pedal this manually to go uh, about another two miles back to the house. So let's see how well this does. All right, I'm in gear one in total manual mode. Let's see what we got. Yes, yeah, definitely got some pretty good resistance, but at least it works. Uh, of course, whenever I go downhill, I'll be able to uh, do a bit better. But so one thing that is better for a bicycle like this over a scooter is that you can still pedal like this when the battery is dead. With a scooter, you'd have to kick manually. So, okay. Yep, it might be a slow ride back to the house, but it's gonna work. Now that the battery on this bike is totally discharged, let's do a timed charge. I've got the uh, wall plug charger here, so let me just connect this to the uh, power. Now the plug to charge this is right down here. I'm going to pop that free, and then we should be able to stick this in here and get this bike charged. It's right at six o'clock in the evening, so I'll see how long it's gonna take this to charge. I don't see anything on the display there, um, but I do see there is a red light here on the charger. So I'm assuming that will turn a different color or go off whenever this bike is fully charged. So, all right, I'll check back in an hour or two hours and see how we are. I look back and it's been about seven years since I've ridden a bicycle. So I hopped on this and put 30 miles on it and it came back to me just like riding a bike. <laughs> so uh, a few thoughts about this bicycle before uh, we close up here. Uh, first of all, uh, Havsko has asked that I do a one month update and I'll do a lot more in-person riding for you so you can see what this thing is like. But uh, very first thing I noticed, it's a lot taller than I'm used to for a bicycle. So this right here comes up to about belly button height and I am uh, five foot 11. The next thing I noticed, I just hopped off of this bike at a stop and like this and uh, yeah, you gotta watch out. So when you hop off of this bike, hop off with one side off to the uh, you know, side. Hit your thigh with that is what I'm saying. Otherwise you will regret it. Uh, so it's tall. If you are shorter than 5'10", then you may want to consider the bike that has a, a steeper uh, decline down here. So you're not gonna be hitting that bar. Uh, so on my 30 mile test ride, I did run out of the battery. Uh, I was supposed to get 40 to 80 miles on this with the pedal assist. I did not charge this out of the box. So the state of charge that it had whenever I jumped onto it is what I rode with and I got 30 miles, which seems like it was really good because I put this thing through some pretty serious hills and it did very well. The seat is comfortable, but also hard at the same time. Uh, I was hitting some really good rocks and it was jarring me around. Uh, on the seat. Now on the handlebars, I had the uh, shocks uh, loose here and that was making a huge difference in comfort. So definitely good. Uh, so I guess if I were to step back and say, what's my opinion on this e-bike? It's very nice. I like it a lot. It has performed better than I expected. The acceleration is quick on the throttle over here. The gearing is perfect for going 20 miles per hour. I have not logged into the app to turn on the uh, 28 miles per hour. Um, there were a few times on the highway I thought I could definitely get up to 28, but on the curves around here, 20 was actually plenty fast enough. So if you were you're in a, a city, I think 20 was, is fine. You won't have to go any faster than that. So this concludes my introduction, assembly, and first ride of this bicycle. In the next video, which will come out probably a month from now, I will do a more in-depth actual riding experience of this bike and let you know my thoughts after putting a few more miles on this thing. Um, it is big, so make sure you have a nice space to store this in. 
I wouldn't keep it out in the elements. Um, I'm going to keep it over here in my portable garage, and I think it will do uh, just fine in there. So, thanks for watching. I'm Seth with the Land of House channel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.